I haven't purchased a current generation video game console in 10 years, but when the Super Nintendo Classic Edition dropped in North America on September 29, 2017, I picked it up that day. Since I went straight from the Genesis to the N64 as a kid, I looked forward to reliving the glory of the one that got away. However, even amid the iconic melodies of Mario, Yoshi, Zelda, and Samus, the tune I found myself humming the most often was one I never expected, the menu music. Both the NES and Super Nintendo Classic Editions present the same melody in their menu theme. It sends up everything great about old Nintendo music in two very different ways. In this video, I'm going to take these melodies apart and discuss what makes them work and why they're so effective at evoking nostalgia. At the end, I'm going to show you how to build a melody from scratch using the same principles I've discovered through analyzing these pieces. Let's start with the NES Classic Edition menu music, which wastes no time in presenting our main melody. The segment we're examining here is a four-bar phrase, repeated twice, composed almost entirely of chord tones, or notes that are in the chord of the underlying harmony. Speaking of the underlying harmony, it's deceptively simple in this piece, giving the melody space to take center stage and really shine. We know that nailing chord tones is a priority to this mystery composer, because he or she alternates between harmonizing in thirds and sixths below the melody, ensuring that each harmony pitch hits either the one, three, or five of the underlying chord. When harmonizing a third below the melody risks hitting a non-chord tone, she opts for a sixth instead. This intentionality to keep the piece consonant with the harmony might have something to do with the fact that chord tones are simple, memorable, singable, and have an innocent quality about them. If jazz cats are cool because they're always pushing the boundaries of dissonance, the corollary to that might be that this melody is cute for being so unashamedly consonant. One look at the design of Nintendo's franchises shows us they know a thing or two about how to create characters that give you all sorts of warm fuzzies. It makes sense that the music accords with this aesthetic. Unlike the NES menu theme, the Super Super Nintendo menu theme is very comfortable straying away from chord tones, channeling a bit of a jazzier style. The piece takes us on a trip around the circle of fifths with its 1, 5, 4, 7, 3, 6, 2, 5, 1 progression. embellished, transformed, and stretched over the course of four sections. The main melody gives us a lot to chew on, but before I jump into that, I want to show you something cool I learned from the new melodic material this theme introduces. The A section melody outlines a D major triad twice. The second time it comes around, however, it's given a shot of rhythmic interest in the form of some eighth note syncopation. The two motifs are smoothly connected by this E. Same three pitches, completely different rhythm. It's a pretty cool way to get more mileage out of a simple motif. Nobuo Uematsu employs this nifty little trick in the Final Fantasy VI soundtrack with similar results. Anyway, back to the main melody. Before I continue, let me just play the NES and Super Nintendo menu themes back to back so you can really hear it. The Super Nintendo version modulates up a fifth from G to D, so recognizing our core melody might be tricky on first listen. The Super Nintendo theme stretches out the NES melody to span about an octave and a half of space, with a nice perfect eighth leap here. Not an easy melody to sing, but still a delight to the ears. Once we've grown accustomed to the melody, the composer subverts expectations on the repeat by throwing in a chromatically descending bass line straight out of the Super Mario World overworld theme. Is this a cheeky nod to the game, or just a coincidence? I'm gonna stick with the former. Either way, it made me think of Super Mario World, which, rather uncoincidentally, does the exact same thing. It presents a melody, then swaps out the standard bass movement for a chromatically descending bass line. She totally did this on purpose. I mean, come on. There's no secret formula to writing a great melody, but there are more than a few things these pieces have taught us about writing melodies. So with these ingredients, let's cook up a nice, a spicy melody. 
That is very offensive. So for our NES melody, let's start with a simple chord progression to get some rails to run on. Working in G major, let's try a one, two, five, one, two, five, one. You really can't get much simpler than that. Let's use chord tones here to write a nice, big, expansive melody in the first bar. Taking our cue from both the chord tones from the NES menu theme and the big, expansive presentation of the melody from the Super Nintendo menu theme. For the second bar, let's do some more chord tones, but give the piece some breathing room with a half note here. The NES menu theme includes some nice scalar runs with both non-chord tones and chord tones. So let's write in some eighth note triplets here to embellish the five chord, as well as some quarter note triplets to spice up the resolution to the one. By the way, both themes employ a liberal use of triplets and I'm certainly not complaining. As the phrase repeats, let's ever so slightly tweak our opening melody with a scalar run to keep things from getting stale. We'll keep our consequent melody from bar two intact, but really embellish this last melody over the five chord to give it a lot of punch back to the one. Now let's go through and harmonize in thirds and sixth beneath the melody, following the path of the NES menu theme by making sure all harmony pitches are hitting a strong chord tone in these first two bars. I'll add a simple bass line that reinforces the progression and voila. We'll come back to this in a second. For now, let's use this melody as a starting point for our Super Nintendo style tune. For this one, let's keep it straight, no swing, and add our melody from the previous tune in verbatim. So far, our harmony is the same as well, but instead of the vanilla 2-5-1, we'll take the 5 to the flat 6 diminished, then to the 6, then back to the 5. Hopefully this sleight of hand plays with the listener's expectations a bit. We'll embellish the melody with a different scalar run in measure 7 and couple that with our secret weapon, a chromatically descending bass line that takes us down to the 4, back up to the 5, and cleanly back to our 1 chord. Okay, let's pop these MIDI files into Logic, put some chip sounds on them, and see how they turned out. Well, thanks so much for watching. I hope this video was educational and informative, or at the very least interesting. Maybe even gave you something that you can try in your own compositions. I'll leave you with my Super Nintendo menu style theme, but if you like this stuff, definitely check out my Lakeside Lab series, where I'm analyzing the soundtrack from Ocarina of Time. Until then, I'll see you next time. Oh, and if you like this video, please strike the thumbs up icon with the fervor of a thousand angry suns. Bye.